This is section yes, 3.7. You have a balloon and you blow an air into it. So here's the balloon, I don't know, I can't really draw. Oh, looks like deformed balloon a little bit there. But when you blow air into the balloon, the balloon looks like a sphere. That's the closest I get to a sphere there. And it has a radius r. First we have to know what the equation for the volume of a sphere. Anyone knows the volume of a sphere? The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. You can research that if you don't know the answer to. So let's take a healthy adult. Our lungs can hold 4 liters of air when you expand it if you're healthy. When you blow that air out, you can put four liters of air in it. But let's say we're pumping air into that balloon. <coughs> You're blowing air into it. You're not going to use four liters. But let's say the volume of that air you're pushing into the balloon per time, because you're blowing every like 15 seconds. <coughs> um, it's, I don't know, let's put some numbers. 20 cubic centimeters per minute. I'm, not, I'm making that up. You're blowing air into the balloon. Now, let's think about this. Is the volume of the balloon increasing or decreasing? So that's a positive. That's a positive. We're adding that. And the question is, how fast the radius is changing? How fast the radius is increasing when R equals, I don't know, 5 centimeters? It depends on the value of R. If you ever blown air into a balloon, at the beginning when you blow, you see the balloon getting bigger and bigger and bigger quickly. What happens as the balloon gets bigger? You blowing looks like it's not moving. Why? It's a bigger area, bigger volume. You're adding air to it and nothing is happening because it would be a slower rate. So I'm saying how fast the radius is increasing when R equals 5. And I'll ask it again. when r equals 10. It's not the same answer. You'll see that radius barely moving when r equals 10 compared to 5. The good news is I have an equation that ties the volume to the radius of the balloon. I said that's a sphere, volume of a sphere 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now I need to take the derivative, but the derivative with respect to time. Now with respect to x, so the derivative of v, it's not v prime. Well, we used to write v prime. Since I'm taking with respect to time, it's going to be dv dt. That's the derivative. Just like the derivative of y, we wrote what? dy dx. There's 4 thirds. That's a constant. All of these, 4 thirds pi is a constant. What is the derivative r to the third? 3r three three R squared, yes, but you've got to add more to it now, times, that, treat r as a u, because r is a function of time. When it was u, we put times what? u sub prime. Now you're going to add times what? dr dt. If I clean that, dv dt is equal to what? 4 pi r squared times dr dt. I'm looking for dr dt. Both questions find dr dt. And now let's answer both questions. I'll, I'll label this as question A and this one question B. Question A, how fast the radius is increasing when R equals 5 and dV dt equals 20? Uh, 
I forgot to write dr dt was my dr dt what's dv dt 20 over 4 pi r is what 5 when you square 5 which is what 25 20 over 100 pi Simplify it. Is that 1 over 5 pi? Small number. So the radius is not changing that fast. Question? Yes. Where does the 3 go in the 4 thirds? Cancel that 3. Oh, oh, okay. So this 3 and that 3, they cancel each other out. And for B here, What's dr dt? How fast the radius is increasing when it's 10? Twenty over four hundred pi, which is one over twenty r. Ah, uh, one over twenty pi, not r. I mean. Notice, so the radius is not moving that way that fast. You can pull your calc out and find the answer to each one of these. You'll see they're small numbers. But when that balloon was small, as you blow on it, the radius is increasing. You know, you can see it increasing. But when the balloon is big, you're blowing, blowing, and nothing is happening. It's like if you ever to blow, decide to blow like, uh, what is those? Uh, Inflatable mattresses, they're big. You blow, <sighs> nothing, <sighs> nothing. Because the volume is massive for that one. Compared to something small like a toy, like a beach ball, it doesn't take much to blow it because it's not that big. So when R equals 10 centimeters, you're talking about a good sized balloon. The balloon is this big, actually. It's not that big, the size of a tennis. Uh, not tennis, the size of a volleyball or a soccer ball. When it's 10 or 5, there's a 5 centimeter, so the radius is 10. That's the size of a baseball. It's not that big. Now, I'm not adding that much air to it. I'm saying 20 cubic centimeters per minute. That's not a lot. Just a little amount like a little baby blowing it. So that's how we look for related rates. I'll give you a few examples with that. Again, some of these we need to know what the equation and some of the equation is not given. Let's take this example. We have a cone, ice cream cone. And it's leaking. Ice cream is coming out of the bottom. You went, you bought a massive ice cream cone. And I have to give you some dimension for it. Let's say the height of the ice cream cone. How tall the ice cream cone? Let me see. Where's my ruler? I don't eat ice cream. I'm not an ice cream person, really. What do you think? Five inches? Is that a waffle cone? Big one. And let's say the diameter on the top. What do you think? More than three? More than that distance? Is it four maybe for the big waffle? It's four. Yeah. That's a big actually ice cream waffle cone. Here, with four inches diameter end to end and somehow the ice cream is leaking out of the bottom it's coming out at the rate dv dt the volume is decreasing because it's hot outside it's 90 degrees melting really fast we're losing that at the rate of negative negative means we're losing shrinking 
It's all liquid inside that now. It's too hot. Um, five cubic inches per minute. If it's per second, you're in trouble. You just lost the entire ice cream. It's leaking out like a hose. Gone. You know, you'll be eating just uh, the cone itself. And this, my favorite part of the whole ice cream is the cone, actually. I don't care about the ice cream. You get the wrong ice cream, though. No, I don't really like ice cream. No, I actually, no. The My wife doesn't like the cone. She only likes the ice cream, and I like the cone. So she'll eat all the ice cream, I eat the cone. I save a lot of money that way. <laughs> no, you gotta have the ice cream inside it just a little bit. Like you mix in it and get soggy a little bit. Otherwise, it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. Eating a cardboard box. And the question is, how fast the height is changing? Not the radius, the height. Remember the ice cream. If you look at that, if you watch the ice cream, if this is the center of it. You can see the ice cream might be down here. Next time the ice cream is down here, so it's dropping in that cone. It's melting, really, dropping fast. Well, we need to find an equation that ties the volume of the ice cream to the height to the radius. Well, we have an equation that says the volume of a cone, it's four thirds, is it? I think it's four, uh, one third. One third, I'm sorry, the sphere is four thirds. One third pi r squared h. Now I got a problem. I have r and h. There is no mention in the problem about r. So I could do it as two variable. But I can't finish it with the information I gave you. Four inches what? Correct. The radius will be two, but you don't know what dr dt. See, if I decide to take the derivative, maybe you don't want to write this because it's not going to work. So I even put there, will not work yet. If you decide to take the derivative, I say go ahead. So don't write it down because it's not going to work. The derivative of that dv dt. One third pi is a constant. Leave it outside. What's the derivative of r squared and h? You have to use the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second. The first is r squared times the derivative of h, which is what? dh dt. I should have said find dh dt when r equals, I don't know, uh, one centimeter. One inch, I guess I'm using inches. Or when h equals, since I'm looking for h, when h equals two inches. So r squared times dh dt plus h times the derivative of r, which is what? 2r times dr dt. I got a big problem. My problem is I don't know what dr dt. I can't finish it. I know what r. When h is 2, I can tell you what r is. Well, maybe I could. So I don't like this approach. There is no mention of dr dt. If I don't have a number for this, I have a number for this. I have a value for h, but not a value for r. Hmm. So this is not good. So let's try make it work. Let's make it work. How do we make it work? I need somehow to take this equation and write that as a function of h only. I need to get rid of that R from it. Um. Is there a relationship between R and H? Here's what we're looking at. The cone. Hmm. 
the radius here, when this is 5 inches, the radius is what? 2 inches? But as this one drops down, now the ice cream level is right there. What's this height? What's the relationship between the height and R now? Notice we have similar triangles. You see that? The ratio of the height to R for the low triangle is going to be the same as 5 to 2 on the big one. So we can find out what R in terms of H. 2H equals what? 5R or R equals 2 over 5 times H. So I found a relationship between R and H. Now I can bring that value back with me and plug it right here. If I plug it there, I have the volume equals what? One third pi. In place of R squared, it's going to be what? 2 over 5 H squared times H. Now I just took my equation, I changed it to V as a function of H only. Then I'll take the derivative, but let me clean it first. 2 over 5 when you square it, that's 4 over 25 with the 1 third, 4 over 75 pi h cubed. Now take the derivative. The derivative of v dv dt. 4 over 75 pi is a constant. The derivative of h cubed is what? 3 h squared times what? dh dt. Now plug in the numbers given to us. Clean it first. This will be 4 over 25 pi h squared dh dt. Now put your number in. dv dt is what? Negative 5? h is 2, square that will be what? 4. Can we solve for dh dt now? You can divide everything by this or multiply by the reciprocal. negative 5 times, instead of dividing, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. Negative 125 over 16 pi, whatever that number, that's how fast the height is dropping every minute. So the ice cream in that corner at that time when h was 2, is dropping at the rate of 125 over 16 pi. I don't know where my calculator is. Somewhere here, if I do the math, that's almost an inch per minute the height is dropping. It's decreasing at the rate of one inch per minute. Let's see, what's 125? More than one inch, actually. 125 divided by 16 divided by pi at the rate of 2.5. inches per minute. So if you actually have one inch high there, that means you have less than a minute before the ice cream runs out. Because as you travel down, even start to drop faster and faster. You might have 30 seconds for it before that ice cream is gone. So you better ask for a cup quickly. And take it home, put it in the freezer. 
and remake the ice cream one more time. Again, sometimes these equations are not given to you. You have to find them. I'll give you one. I don't know if you saw that last week. I think Delta Airline landed in the wrong airport, commercial plane, in Florida, with about 100 passengers on it. They said, well, the airport, and the, the pilot defense, the airport's only 10 miles away, and it has the same type of runway. When it says runway 24, that means the direction 240 degrees. That's how the runways are numbered. So they have the same runway number, so that's why he made that mistake. And it is actually really easy. 10 miles, when you're in the sky looking down, 10 miles is nothing. When I sit in that plane, I'm looking down, I'm seeing almost 40 miles around me, like nothing. It looks 25 miles. That's 25 miles. It looks like um, half a mile when you're up there looking down. So I can see that happening. So we'll pick on Delta Airline. An airplane flying at a certain height, it's uh, six miles. So the airplane's going, here we go, it's not landing. The height of the airplane is six miles, up in the sky, 32,000 feet roughly. It's commercial flight, that's where they fly at. And it's flying over, I don't know, let's pick an airport, uh, well-known New York, Lo uh, JFK. This is JFK, one of the busiest airports in the world. So if you're flying over JFK, the radar is monitoring that airplane. The radar is looking at the airplane. There's the radar down here. Like this is the radar here. And it's monitoring, you know, you go over and you say, hey, Okay, keep an eye on us. They'll tell you what you have to do. Now, what's happening here, let's call this distance X and this distance S. As the plane traveling in this direction, what happened to both of these distances? They're decreasing, right? Because, uh, I mean, if you can take a snapshot of the plane a few minutes later, the plane will be right here. And notice the same height, but now that's X and this is S. Look what happened to S. It's decreasing, so it's X is decreasing. So let's say the distance S is decreasing at the rate... I don't know uh, what number we're going to use. It's decreasing at the rate of negative 400 miles per hour. How fast X is changing? when x equals 8 miles. Notice the problem talks about s and x in it. Which means I have to somehow find the relationship between S and X. Can you think of a relationship between them? What is it? This is S, this is X, this is 6,000 feet, or 6 miles, I mean that's 6,000 feet. 6 miles. Can you find relationship between S and X? 
Well, I could use the cosine, but there's no need for it. Because then I need theta. We don't know what the angle is, right? How about Pythagorean's theorem? S squared it, equals 36 x squared. Yep, S squared equals x squared plus 36. That's right, Patrick. Pythagorean's theorem. Now I got my equation. Let me take the derivative. Notice both derivative with respect to time. The derivative S squared is what? 2S times what? DSTT. The derivative x squared is what? Times dx dt. And the derivative 36, which is what? 0. I get almost everything. I said almost. I know on the right side, I know what x is. x is what? 8. And I'm looking for dx dt. On the left side, I got the 2. I don't know what s is, but I know ds dt negative 400. So I don't know what s is. When x is 8, I have no idea what s is. I can find it when x is 8, right? Using that. S squared equals what? X squared plus the 36. S is unknown. X is 10. Or 8, I'm sorry. 8 squared plus the 36. That's 100. Which means S will have to be what? 10. Now come back and put that number here. Times 4, that's what? 8,000? dx dt divided by 16 negative 8,000 divided by 16 it's neg I get negative 5,000 or 500, I'm sorry, negative 500 miles per hour. I use miles per hour. That distance is negative 500 miles per hour. What does that tell me, by the way, in real life? If there's a shadow for the plane, if this was, let's say, 12 o'clock, and you can watch the shadow moving on the ground, how fast the shadow is moving? moving that speed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, decrease is coming toward you. That's called ground speed. When you're flying from here to Orlando, the pilot will look at the map. They go, the distance is this distance. On the map, is different than when you drive it, because we don't zigzag in the sky. We go straight line. They measure the distance. They know what the ground speed they can tell you when the plane's gonna arrive there based on the ground speed. If you get the wind behind you, your ground speed will be more than what the engine's telling you. If you get the wind facing the plane, your ground speed is slower. You're going slower speed than what the instrument's telling you. And they have to figure that out. And that's why when you're traveling somewhere, Orlando, California, whatever, in one direction it might take six hours, on the way back it might take five hours. You get headwind and tailwind because we calculate your ground. Your distance is not changing. If you go from here to California or California to here is the same distance. What changes how fast you're moving? It the direction. direction. East, east versus west. What do you mean east versus west direction? You're going say towards California or from California. Well, if you if you're going from here to California, you fly in different direction. Yes, 180 degrees backward, but the distance itself is not changing, Patrick. Right. If you're going from New York to California, you're flying this way. But you're going California to New York, you're flying that way, if you go straight. 
So if the distance is not changing, the only thing that's really changing is, do you have wind? Is there headwind and tailwind? And that will decide if you're gonna, which direction is going to be faster, which one is going to be slower. You know. Run up all the way around. Go around like this zigzag? The other way. <laughs> well, actually, they try to go direction where the wind is blowing. So a lot of times you see, like birds, for example, you see the birds try to go over the water with the current, so they're not working that hard. Let the current carry them. Pilots do the same thing. You see them coming, they go, why are they going this way? They're taking especially long flight, you know. And why they climb high? Why do they have to go 32,000, 38,000? Jet stream, the higher you go, the faster the wind is moving. They're not going to go to 40,000 feet if you're going from Boston to New York. The distance is not that far. By the time you climb to that height, it's too late. You've got to go down now. But when you're going from uh, Boston or New York to San Francisco or you're going to Paris, that's six-hour flights. They'll climb as high as they're allowed to climb. They can grab the jet stream. And if the wind faces them, they'll stay as low as they can so there's less wind facing them. Let's try another example. Uh, what are we going to do? Example. What? Let's see. I'll uh, think of. I'll do another one like similar to the ones just did here. We'll make you like the mean person. Let's say you're going to paint your house. You have an extension ladder that's leaning like this against the house. And this is 24 feet extension ladder. And, you know, you got on the chair there, and you go, you know what, i got to paint this house. My dad been yelling at me, i got to paint it, or your brother decided to paint it. We'll make you the mean person. So when you put that ladder against the house, maybe you want to move it back about eight feet back, some decent distance. You don't want it against the house standing there, because there's a chance of you falling down. Here's the problem. When you put it eight feet back, how high do you think the ladder goes? Well, most people say, well, it's 24 feet, take away 8, we'll go to 16 feet. Try again. It might drop maybe one foot or two. Because if you take that ladder and lean against the house, straight against the house, it should reach how high? 24. 24. If you move it back 8 feet, what's the height? So 24 squared equals what? 8 squared plus h squared. 24, when you square it, it's 576. 8 squared is what? 64 plus h squared. It's 512. Guess how high that ladder goes? The square root of that number, which is 22.6. So you're dropping just a little bit over a foot, foot and a half, less than a foot and a half. So you move it eight feet back, which is stable now. It's only going to drop by about 1.4 foot. Now, you don't like your brother. So your brother on the ladder painting, as your brother, could be your sister. We'll see your brother. And you really matter him. So you start to pull the ladder backward in this direction. <laughs> so you're pulling back. What happens to that distance? It's increasing, right? So we're saying dx dt, that distance is increasing at the rate of plus, I don't know, you teasing him or her two feet per minute. Not too fast, but you're pulling on it. What's going to happen to the height? 
how fast the height is going to drop again when you stop pulling when x equals 8 feet I'll make your sisters the mean one. Here's your sister with the long hair. She's pulling on the ladder, sliding there. What is X? X is the distance here. So it's moving back. We're saying find how fast the height is changing, the height of the ladder, when X equals 8 feet, when you stop pulling at that time. No, X, the length of the ladder is 24. The ladder was leaning against the house like this, eight feet from the bottom. So your sister comes in, start pulling. At that time, we start pulling. How fast the top is dropping? Notice it's dropping. So when X is eight feet from that, and you start to pull, how fast the top is dropping? Right, it's gonna be 22.6. Well, when X is, that's the height. But I'm looking for DH, the change in height how fast the height is dropping. That's where the height will reach. But as this one moves down at the rate of two meters, two feet per second, the height's gonna drop. Is it three feet per second? Is it four feet per second? Is it half a foot per second? So I have to find the relationship between X and H. And again, I can see I have a right triangle. So that's Pythagorean's theorem. 24 squared equals what? X squared plus H squared. Take the derivative. I don't really care what 24 squared is, it's just a number. When you take the derivative of that number, the answer is what? Zero. What's the derivative X squared? 2X times DX DT. What's the derivative x squared? 2h times dh dt. Plug in everything that we know. x is what? 8 dx dt. What's the change in x? That was plus 2. 2 times h. What's h? 22.6. What is the change in H? Two times two is four times eight, 32. Plus two times six, 12. Five, 45.2 dH You can move the 32 to this side. And what's dh dt? It's going to be a negative 32 over 45.2. If you do the math, that's negative what? Thirty-two divided by forty-five point two point seven one. So just because the bottom is moving backward at the rate of two feet per minute, it doesn't mean the top is gonna move at the rate two feet per minute. It's gonna move at the rate drop down. Minus means it's shrinking. The height is shrinking. You're coming down at the rate of almost 0.7 foot every minute. You can use that logic if you towing a boat out of the water. You know, you got the crane, you got that rope pulling on it, and it, it makes the waters horizontal, the height, and you got that rope there. That's the same logic.
I can think of different examples, different shapes, anything. You could have a water tank with that leak in it, you know. That could be like a city. Uh, let's see, North Carolina. Water tank in North Carolina. I don't know. I'm just. I don't know why I picked North Carolina. We have a water tank for the town, some town, North Carolina. I don't know. Anyone from North Carolina been to North Carolina? I've been a couple of times. Salem. Is that North Carolina or South Carolina? I don't even know. I think it's North Carolina. But we have a water tank there. That's, you know, for the town of Salem. So it's a big water tank. It's not a small. It's 15 feet tall. It looks like a cylinder, like a can of soda. And the top, I don't know, it's 20 feet wide. And it might not be full to the top with water. The water might be as high, I don't know. It's not really 10, 15 feet of water. It's only 12 feet of water. And water's coming out of it because people are using the water at the rate. So I have the water leaking out of this. Water's leaking out of this at the rate negative, I don't know, 50 cubic feet per minute. It's volume, it's always cube. And the question is, how high or how fast the water is dropping in that tank when the height equals 12? So we got a water tank, somebody took a gun, put a hole in it, and water's leaking out. Or just people using the water. You can change the story to a little water tank on top of your house. Someone took a BB gun, it's leaking water now. Water's shooting out. So I need to find a relationship. That's a cylinder. If you want to find the volume of that, I don't remember off the top of my head what the volume of a cylinder, but I can tell you for any shape, the volume of a shape, it's really the area times the height. When you look at that, what's the area looks like? Doesn't look like a circle? So it's pi r squared times h. The volume. Now here, I don't have to worry about R there because R for the whole shape, it never changes. For the entire water tank, R is what? It's 10 feet. So it's a constant where the height is changing. So I can go, when we did this example, the cone there, we can ice cream, R was changing. So I couldn't just plug in a number there. It changes from point to point and that. So it was a variable. I had to leave it there. And I had to change the equation in terms of R and H. You can use similar triangle. The ratio here of H to R, no. R is always 10 feet. So I can take R and put 10 for that, which is 100 pi times H now. It's fixed. Now we, we take the derivative. Derivative V is what? dV dt. 100 pi is a constant. What's the derivative h? dH dt. It didn't really matter what time you're looking at h. The height will keep dropping at the same rate. Why? Because it's the same r. Because r is the same. It's not going to be faster when it's lower or higher. If that thing was narrowing down, will start, the height will start to drop faster as you travel down. But the fact the height is the same, the rate will be the same. It doesn't depend on h. So that h I gave you is useless here. What's dv dt? Negative 50. This is 100 pi times dh dt.
it's negative 1 over 2 pi which means mathematically 1 divided by 2 pi is dropping at the rate of negative 0.16 foot per minute every minute that height will drop down drop down drop down drop down so we can tell you when that tank is going to be empty. If we don't fix that hole there, if we keep using that water without adding water to it, that tank is going to be empty in what? To drop one foot, how many minutes is going to take for one foot? One over that number. It's going to take 6.28 minutes to drop one foot. It's 0.16 feet every minute. That means one foot here of drop will be will take 6.28 minutes. So if you have water in that tank for 12 feet high, how many minutes going to take? Times 12, 75 minutes. In 75.4 minutes, that water tank will be empty. We better fix it soon, otherwise everyone's going to be dying there. No water. So the height is coming down at the rate 0.16 foot every minute, or at the rate of 6.1 foot every 6.28 minutes. That water height will drop one foot, one foot, one foot. Now imagine if you can p fill your pool with water at the rate of 6.28 or one foot every 6.28 minutes. You can fill that pool in water in about one hour. That hose will have to be like a fire department hose, one of those massive hoses, to fill that that quickly. So that's some of the examples for related rates. The other section will take 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I'll wait on it because it looks like you just did 20 rounds with Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs>